Since I received the subject of my sermon, the knowing the purpose of God and ministry, I prayed very much before the Lord to receive his message. Then the Lord spoke into my heart, my purpose of sending you to America is to report about your experience of ministry building the largest church in the world. So I'm going to obey God's command to fulfill his purpose of sending me here to General Council. Many people ask me a question, Joe, how did you build the world's largest church? And many news reporters are coming to me and asking me to tell them in a few words about the secret of how to build the largest church in the world. But brothers and sisters, it is impossible for me to tell all the details in a few minutes. But tonight, I want to share my experience with the Holy Spirit about how to build the great thriving church in our lives. In 1958, I graduated from the Assembly of God Bible College. Then, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, I went to the suburban area of the Seoul city. It was a very poverty-stricken area, and by the help of God, we put up the very old American marine tent, and we began to have service. And uh, when I look at the situation at that time, things seemed to be so bright, and I felt desperate in my heart, because I was absolutely poverty-stricken, and the place was slum, and I did not know from where should I start my ministry. But whenever I prayed, then the Holy Spirit gave me into my heart a tremendous vision. And my soul was exalted, and I was excited because of the great visions and dream of building a church. When I opened my eyes, I would only see five members in my church. But when I close my eyes, when I pray, when I'm in Holy Spirit, then I would always see the 3,000 people in a beautiful church. For a little while, I was confused why I was seeing this tremendous church in my heart constantly, which I am not really experiencing in my own ministry. But day in, day out, when I was praying, the Holy Spirit was impressing into my heart the tremendous church in the vision. And by and by, I began to believe that vision. And I believed, as the Bible says, God calls those things which we not as if they were. I began to call that church as if they were existing in my life. Soon, I began to preach as if I were preaching to the 3,000 members. And I began to walk as if I am the pastor of the 3,000 members. And uh, I was completely saturated with the visions and dream. Ever since that time until now, for 34 years in my ministry, before God did great work, he always planted his visions and dream into my soul so that I could think as he thought, I could act as he act. So brothers and sisters, dare to receive the visions and dream by the Holy Spirit into your heart. Before you have great church in your area, that great church is going to be built in your heart. You are not going to build the church. You are going to give birth to a church. And the church is going to be pregnant in your heart by the Holy Spirit. So show me your vision today. I will show you your future church. And I had that vision in my heart burning. But still, the vision didn't come to reality. But I prayed very much. And uh, that small village was completely occupied by the animism, spiritism, heathenism. And I tried to win soul to Jesus Christ. But the God of this world 
completely blinded their mind that they were not listening to my teaching. I tried everything. I used every kind of gimmick to open their heart to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And very clearly, I was failing. Then the Holy Spirit spoke into my heart. My son, you are not fighting against blood and flesh. You are fighting against the power and darkness. So you must start by prayer, by intensive prayer, by messy prayer. Without prayer, you can conquer the territorial spirit in this area. Before you really bind the spirit which blind minor people in this area, you can successfully preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to these people. So I received a message from the Holy Spirit. I began to pray. I tell you, we really prayed. We prayed from early morning at 4.30. Then we prayed during daytime. And we prayed till late in the evening. Every day I prayed for more than five hours. I was desperate. I prayed and prayed and prayed. Then things began to happen. Mighty deliverance began to appear in my ministry. And suddenly the rumor began to spread. When you go to that church, things are going to happen. So many people were obsessed, were oppressed, were even depressed and possessed by the evil spirit. And the evil spirit were rampant there. Filthy spirit, lying spirit, spirit of divination, spirit of the infirmity and sickness and disease. So, after having armed myself with a massive prayer, I began to challenge the power of darkness. There were one confirmed alcoholic who had been alcoholic for more than 10 years, and everybody knew him. And his nephew was a famous doctor in our city, and he tried to heal his uncle, but he completely failed. Then I challenged this person. And I prayed for three months for his deliverance. And one day, he was completely delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit. And since that time, he did not even taste a drop of alcohol. He became a flaming witness. Then the priest of his own temple in that area came to me and challenged me. If you could go down to that village and raise up a woman who was dying from paralysis for seven years. And if you could ever perform that miracle, then we will move out and you may start church here. And otherwise, we will come and burn up your tent church. So I could not help but accepting the challenge. And I accepted the challenge. And for one month, we prayed like a dying person. But just before the tremendous deliverance, I had a very wonderful vision. Till late in the evening, I was praying for the healing of that woman. Suddenly I was in trance. Then I heard a very eerie oriental music. And according to that music, a big snake began to walk into my room, dancing. The head was human beings. And suddenly that snake jumped up on me and tried to bite me. And I was fighting against the snake in my vision. And hours and hours we struggled, and I was losing the battle. And the snake was nearing to my face, and the snake was ready to bite off my face. Then I said, Jesus, in my heart. I was so paralyzed that I could not even mention audibly, but in my thought, I said, Jesus, help me. Jesus. And when I began to mention the name of Jesus, suddenly I saw the fear appear in the eyes of the snake. Then I was strengthened. I could audibly say, Jesus, Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are defeated enemy. And suddenly the snake became powerless. And I took hold of the snake, put the head under my heel, and I smashed. And teeth came out and eyes came out. I took up the snake, rolled on my arms, and I came out. There are people in the town all came gathered together in front of me. I cast the snake before them in my vision. And I said, all these years, you have been worshipping this devil. But today, this devil is conquered. 
Alléluia. And the next morning, after having the early morning prayer meeting, people in the town turned out, and by the hundred, they were marching toward the ten church. And I said, oh my God, now they are coming to burn up the church. The final day came, I could not cure that lady. But one young lady was walking before them, leading the crowd, carrying a child. And when she was nearing to the church, she exactly looked like the woman who was suffering from paralytic. And I thought that she was twin sister. And as she neared, she said, oh, pastor, I'm healed. I said, you are paralytic. She said, I'm healed. I said, you are kidding. <laughs> she said, no. Last evening at 2 p.m., you came to my house. You were standing in the yard, and you said to me, in the name of Jesus Christ, Sister, rise up and be healed. So I rose up, and I found that I was healed, and I began to speak in strange language. And God gave her a wonderful deliverance, and that became a trim tremendous testimony. And the people ran up to the temple of the heathens, and they burned up the temple, and they gave that area to me as a present. And I gave that place to the Assemblies of God mission there. Now we have a beautiful church built upon that area for the glory of God. And I began to preach a powerful message about deliverance, I told them that how we were delivered from sin by the cross of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ, and by this deliverance ministry, by the positive message of redemption of Jesus Christ, whole town began to be changed, and now whole area was changed. You can't find any slum there because God came down by the power of the Holy Spirit and changed whole village with Jesus Christ. So as they coming out from heathenism, I stress upon the necessity of the baptism of Holy Spirit very powerfully. Every Friday evening, we would gather together and we would have all night prayer meeting for the baptism of Holy Spirit. I will not even leave one person stay there without receiving the baptism of Holy Spirit. My mother-in-law and I joined the hand together and we prayed through, we prayed through for the baptism of Holy Spirit for every member in our church. And as they were full of the Holy Spirit, oh, our prayer became so powerful that we shook the whole area. And uh, through my experience of pioneering stage in that area, God showed me the basic principle of church growth. To have a church growth, we've got to have the visions and dream in our heart. Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. Brothers and sisters, if you don't have a burning desire and a clear vision and dream of your church, then you are not yet ready to start church. What kind of church do you have in your heart right now? That church is going to appear in your experience. So, church is not going to be built by your hand. Church is going to be given birth to through your heart. You know, for a long time, I've been pregnant with one million souls in my heart. Have you ever seen a man pregnant? But I've been pregnant for these years with one million people in my heart. Now, I've given birth to 700,000 of them. Still yet, I should give birth to 300,000 of them more. But I think I will give birth to them because I know. How? Because I'm pregnant with that numbers in the forms of visions and dream in my soul. So, brothers and sisters, church is starting in the form of visions and dream in your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit, but still... You must have a massive prayer, 
powerful prayer, intensive prayer to destroy the evil spirit, hindering spirit in that area. Brothers and sisters, you would not know that how much the Assemblies of God Foreign Missions Department did for the salvation of foreign nations. In 1961, Assemblies of God headquarters here in America studied the World Conquest Program. Do you remember that, Dr. Carlson? Since that time, you changed the name. But they started the World Conquest Program as a first project. They wanted to build a revival center downtown in Seoul, Korea. And they sent Dr. John Hurston as the first missionary pastor to that church. And John Hurston invited me to come and become a worker together with him. Already I had built a church of 600 people in that village. And I was satisfied, I was happy, but the Spirit said, go together with John Hurston. So we came to the downtown of the city. But people came to me and said, such a young man like you, you are just now 26 years old. How dare you try to start church here? You are surrounded by the oldest Methodist church and oldest Presbyterian church and greatest holiness church. You are right in the middle of that place. And you are young men. You have no experience. You can't build church here. You better move out here before you really fail. But I knew that I could make success because I was already armed in my heart by the teaching of the Holy Spirit at that village. So I said in my heart, I have the vision and dream of building the largest church in Korea. My heart was burning with the gold vision. And I said, I will pray. I will bind all the evil spirit in that area. I will bind all the power in the air in this area. I will pray a massive prayer. Then I will carry out deliverance ministry. I'll give a good message, message of deliverance, message of hope, faith, and love through the redeeming power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then I said, I will make all the people to experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the arms of those church growth principles. We began to start church 1961. By 1964, Exactly I had in my vision before. We had 3,000 members, thriving church. Then suddenly, church growth stopped. And I pushed and pulled. I did everything, but church was not growing. And the largest Presbyterian church had 6,000 members. Still we were lacking 3,000. And my heart was burning. And I was burning in my vision and dream. God show me. Why I can't go beyond the disparity of 3,000? It's just very cold morning after having concluded the early morning prayer meeting. I was left alone in the corner of the church. I was shivering. I was praying. But suddenly I fell into trance. And I was in the presence of Holy Father. And God spoke to me in my vision, in audible voice. My son, do you want to see your church grow beyond the 3,000 members? I said, Father, there is my wish, my desire. Then God said, answer to my question. Suppose Israelites had gone out to the wilderness to catch quail with bare hand. How many quail do you think they might have caught? I said, Father, there wouldn't be many quail in the wilderness. And if they had gone out with bare hand, I wonder how many quail could they catch. I think many people would have died from sunstroke. Then God said, when I send my wind, how many quail did I catch? Oh, quail were falling like dust upon their camp. Then the Spirit said, don't you think that I can do the same thing for you? You are killing yourself, overextending your energy, trying to build up church. But why don't you depend upon the Holy Spirit when my Spirit of the Lord blows? Sinners are going to fall like a dust up on your camp. I jumped up. I said, Lord, do that for me. Do that for me. Then God said, have the definite communion with the Holy Spirit. So I said, oh, Father, I'm glad about that. I have graduate paper about the Holy Spirit. I'm born again. I'm indwelled by the Holy Spirit. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I speak in other tongues. What Holy Spirit do I need anymore? 
Then the warning came. My son, death is trouble with you. The Holy Spirit is a holy person. You should not try to experience with him only. You must treat him as a holy person. He is a living person. He is staying with you together 24 hours. And you have neglected him. You have grieved him. And you have not respected him. And I woke up. That was my vision. But that did a profound job in my heart. I said, Father, I was born again. I was indwelt by the Holy Spirit. I received baptism in the Holy Spirit. But I did not exactly knew the Holy Spirit of person. Of course, I learned in the Bible college. But I did not act like that. Now, since he is the person, I should treat him as a person. Father, my wife is a person, so I should treat her as a person. I should praise her. I should caress her. I should love, love her. In other words, if I don't do that, I will have a cold meal in the morning. <laughs> All the while, I was taking good care of my wife because she was a person then I was not treating the Holy Spirit like that. Yes, God is on the throne. Jesus Christ is being seated on his right hand. The Holy Spirit is in the church, in my heart. He's with me. He's in the world. He's working with me together. He's my senior partner. I have neglected him. So I knelt down and said, Dear God, I've neglected the Holy Spirit. Dear Holy Spirit, I've neglected you. Please forgive me. From today, I am going to recognize you. I'm going to welcome you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to depend upon you. From that time on until now, always, before I come out to the platform, I say, Dear Holy Spirit, I recognize you. I welcome you. I depend upon you. Let's go! Let's go!